there goes Bell. It's a brilliant run from Sam Bell all the way! Ruthless stuff for Bristol City! So this is it, Bristol City's final hurrah of the season with a bank holiday Monday trip to Loftus Road. Nigel Pearson's men will want to finish on a high and consolidate their progression and points total from last season, already besting last season's tally by a point so far. Whilst today we're shaping up to be a perilous final day for our hosts, victory over Stoke City in their last outing secured their championship status and will ease some of the pressure. Of this season, Nigel Pearson and says he hopes the team are delivering a brand of football that supporters enjoy watching. But, of course, he says they'll enjoy it a lot more with more positive results. It's a must-win game for Bristol City to claim 14th spot in the league, a vast improvement on last year's 17th place. Well, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to our Robins TV studio here at Ashton Gates for the coverage of Bristol City trip to Loftus Road and QPI. Joining me in the studio for this one is City defender Rob Atkinson. Rob, welcome back. Thank you for having me again. Yeah. You, you liked the first time, so you came back for more? I have, and thankfully I've got the the co-coms gig this time as well, which is what I was after in the first place. So. He was, yeah, he's very jealous of Chris on the last time. I was. One of the whole thing. Um, man, look, the gaffer has said that things are moving forward nicely, uh, but there's always things to improve on. What do you think he means by that? Well, you just mentioned it there in your little pre-match talk that, uh, you know, we want to sort of play that nice brand of football, but we also want to start getting more positive results. And um, that's something that, We'll be looking to get today and uh, use it as a sort of building block for next season. Um, uh, they, they talk about the games this season, part of the season, you know, not, not really counting for anything to play for. But, you know, today a point and we finish no lower than 15th, could be 14th. And that is a respectable improvement on last season's 17th place. Yeah, and that was the aim really at uh, the start of the season really is to, was to do better than our points tally last season. And we've achieved that and We've still got a game to go and, you know, as you said, it's mid-table in this league is, isn't too bad. And as I said before, we want to build on that and uh, get even more points next season. A turbulent season for QPR, uh, ups and downs, questions about their manager. Um, they are, however, on a bit of an unbeaten run at the moment. They can go four unbeaten today. Does, does that play into our hands? Does that give the, the boys something to bite on? How does that play out today? Uh, it'll, be, it'll be an interesting one. I'll, they're safe now, aren't they? So um, both teams, nothing really to play for. Um, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they how they go. If they've also got an eye on next season, if they're going to change the way they play. I, I know they were very, you know, they've been very direct, but it's worked for them in the last two games. They're, they're the only team that have gone to uh, Burnley and actually won. So that's that's nothing to laugh about, really. So it'll be it'll be a tough game, and we'll have to expect a battle today. All right, Rob, more from you on the way very shortly indeed. First of all, the team news is in from West London. Take us through the detail. As ever, it's Bristol City's lead commentator. A very good afternoon to you, Toby Osborne. Good afternoon, Downsy. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, uh, Gareth Ainsworth makes two changes from the side that defeated Stoke City. The back four remains the same with Jimmy Dunn and Rob Dickey at the heart of it. The latter has scored two goals against Bristol City more than any other Football League side. One change in midfield with Irogbinum coming out of the side. He's replaced by former Bristol City man, 35-year-old Albert Adoma, who sealed safety against Stoke City with the goal in that game. Chris Martin returns to the 11-2, QPR's top scorer after his Ashton Gate departure. He partners Dykes and will be determined to punish his former side. Talented bench with three-time Scottish Premiership champion and Norwegian international Stefan Johansson among the substitutes. Nigel Pearson has made two changes since that defeat to Burnley at Ashton Gate where the Reds put up a dogged display. Mark Sykes comes in for Harry Cornick and great to see Joe Williams back in the starting 11. He replaces Andy King who's had an impressive run of games. Naismith 
back in that back four alongside Zach Viner with Campering and George Tanner on either flank. Scott is beyond the two in midfield. And then beyond them, Sykes, Bell and Conway, perhaps an indication of how Nigel Pearson wants to see the attack line up next season. A big bench today too, a very strong one, including Andy Vyman, Mimetti and Thomas Callas, who of course is eligible again to play. Right for the final time, let's hear the thoughts of Nigel Pearson ahead of kickoff. Nigel, final game of the season. How important is it to finish positively ahead of the close season, but also with one eye on the next? Well, you've just summed it up. It's really important for us, and, and you know the players uh, need to recognise, and I think they do recognise that they are they're playing for for their futures too. And, and that's always, you know, there's always some motivation and, and we've got players who are challenging each other for the uh, to be the top scorer, which is also good. Um, you know, made a couple of changes to, to freshen things up. We've got a lot of uh, legs and energy in the team and uh, it's important that we utilise that today. Joe Williams has probably played more games this season than he has for in the last couple for Bristol City. It's really important for him to finish the season well as well. Well, it's a bit of a bonus for him to be um, back in the side. I mean, when when he uh, got injured at Cardiff away, you know, the, we wondered whether we'd see him again this year, uh, this season. So for him to finish the season starting, I think is a real positive for him. Um, uh, but you know, we we need him to be at his best today, and uh, yeah, he, he gets the nod and um, hopefully he can contribute in a positive way to the team. And Mark Sykes has a very yeah. good first season making that step up. Yeah. He gets another opportunity. Well, he's, uh, he's had a very good season for us and, and um, it means we've got a very mobile front three, very uh, lots of pace and it's important we utilise that today. Uh, it'll be a tough game because they'll, be, they'll still want to finish the season um, uh, winning at home, to give their fans something uh, positive um, to finish the season off. We likewise want to finish the season for ourselves in a positive fashion. So um, I don't want it to be a, a comfortable game at all. If we win, ugly, I don't mind. All the best today. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. Uh, there's Dave Barton chatting to Nigel Pearson uh, at Loftus Road. So Sykes and Williams in, Cornick, Andy King out. Is that kind of what you're expecting, I guess? Yeah, both teams gone really, really strong for this last game. Um, you've always got that chance of a bit of rotation, maybe giving someone a debut, but looks like both teams are going to go for for the win. And, uh, yeah, we've gone strong as well. That's the right thing to do at this point of the season. And, and you don't feel with Nige that he sort of does anything in half measures. He sort of always talks about, you know, playing free. But, you know, I suppose at the end of the day, it's all about getting those three points. Exactly that. He doesn't really matter how well we play, like, no one remembers as long as you get the win and uh, that's exactly what he told us in the the meeting yesterday that you know let's let's end this season on a positive let's end it on a high note and let's end it on three points yeah well what else was said in that meeting that you can repeat on telly <laughs> uh i'm not gonna say i'm afraid no <laughs> uh in terms of the game that that, that qpr are bringing today what, where, what do you think the areas are of qpr's game that we can exploit um i've it's, it's a tough one, really. Obviously, you mentioned that they've, they've won their last two. Um, you can tell that they're going to be very direct, sort of 4-4-2 rigid. So it's going, to be, it's going to be a really tough game. They're going to be direct straight into Chrissy. I mean, I've played against Chris. Well, obviously, I've trained against him. He can be a handful, and he's very, very dominant in the air. And so is Dykes as well. So we've got our work cut out for us at the back. And... Uh, you know, that sort of 4-4-2 allows you to be that sort of two banks of four, which can be very hard to break down, but we've got a lot of energy and speed up top. So um, hopefully we can, you know, get the ball in behind those those defenders and get them running back towards their own goal and cause them problems that way. You talk about Chris Martin, you call him Agent Martin. Tell us why you call him Agent Martin. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, I, I love Chris when he was here and he's gone there and I was hoping that, you know, you'd get them back down the league and us up the league but he's actually turned out to be a bit of a double agent because he's saved them and you can, you can, those goals have been absolutely crucial and he's been really really good for them yeah
Is it odd when you come up against familiar faces? I mean, for the City fans, obviously, Albert Adoma is a familiar face as well. You a bit before your time. But is it odd when you come up against ex-teammates in games? Um, I think it, it can be a little bit maybe beforehand, but l literally as soon as that whistle goes, you kind of, well, I do anyway, I forget any sort of past relations with them and you've got, you can't really afford to sort of, sort of carry that baggage into, into games. You've got to treat them as if they're any other player and then maybe after the game you can sort of, you know, say hello and have a little bit of a catch up depending on how the result went. But yeah, that's, that's kind of the way I, I would go about it. Stuff. All right, Rob, thanks very much no, for thanks. now. You're watching Robins TV. Now, the final Robins TV show of the season wouldn't be complete without a montage. So let's look at some of those excellent goals, the highlights of the 2022-2023 campaign. Yards out. What a goal. Some fantastic memories there. Great to hear uh, the vocal talents of Brian Tidian all the way through that. And some lovely music as well. Uh, right, you're watching Robins TV. Still to come. The last time we ran out at Loftus Road, 2021. So let's relive some of those highlights and, of course, all of the action on today's game. We'll see you.
So we've got all this outdoor space here and it's perfect for companies to come in, whether they're small or large. So we cater for maybe a team of 12 or a team of 800. They can come here, have a really positive experience and be rewarded for all their hard work in the office or whatever industry they're from. As we've got such a big company, a lot of us don't see each other. Being able for the first time to get everyone out together in one place doing an activity together was great for team bonding and boosting that morale. We can um, hone in on specific skills such as communication, leadership, teamwork, resilience. Here we've got a 400 metre military assault course which is fantastic for team building. If you want a morale booster, this is the place to come. It all starts with a dream, a dream to play football, to make our city proud. For these young Bristolians, football is more than just a game. The future is now. It's in the hands of these young players. They were once just like these kids, dreaming of one day playing for their club. Now, they're the stars of BS3. Join these players and thousands of other city fans on our exciting journey. Welcome back to Robins TV, ahead of the Skybet Championship clash between QPR and Bristol City on the final day of the championship season. Thank you very much to uh, for everyone for watching today, whether you're in the UK or whether you are further afield and already on holiday. You're all very welcome for today. Right, back to the action then. And as I mentioned before the break, we've not run out at Loftus Road since 2021. But let's take ourselves back to that moment and when Naki Wells sent the away end wild. Side Andre Gray, and Abijo cuts inside, looks for Dykes. Sengo, right place, right time once again. He gets the return pass and finds a lovely touch to bring the ball under control. Three on three here for Bristol City. It's Masengo, squares it. Andy Stop Wyman, it. Chris Martin. Get in. And there Brilliant. it is, his 100th championship goal. Chris Martin on the brink of half time. Brilliant counter-attack and play. Again, that combination of hand forward running, Tyreek getting his head up and finding him. And it's just, it's heart from the side to get forward. Chris Martin busting the gut. And that's what they'll do when you get the opportunities in the right place. He's an experienced striker, just something talked about a couple of theirs. He knows where to be. Andy, great bit of composure, actually. Um, <laughs> takes it well. Wouldn't expect any less from him. Stunning footwork from Masengo to find Vyman in the first place. Chris Martin was never going to miss from there. Powers it past the Yang. And that's second phase, so it's it's fine margins again. You get the pass off and then we're off and we're attacking. If not, we've got another phase to deal with. Chris Willock, dangerous ball into the box. What about that for a header? But it's rebounded back and into the net. And it's McCallum with his first goal of the season for QPR. It's and inside in the, the first 10 minutes of this second half, they draw level. Kian Prince Foundation Stadium, disappointment for Bristol City. Yeah, disappointing, especially the dealt with the first cross so well. Um, it's a great head end, it's, it's fallen you know, to them. And it's a great strike, I'm not sure Ben's going to do too much about that. Just 
fancy there'll be one or two chances for Bristol City against the run of play late on here, but they've got defending to do. Lyndon Dykes, what, what a, save a save from Dan Bentley. It's that neat, intricate build up again from QPR. It's, it's fast, it's one touch. Um, what a save. It's stunning stop from Bristol City's captain. QPR fans on their feet as they came forward there. But maybe now a chance for Bristol City to break. Off Go goes on, Andy Vyman. Shrugged off any injury he might have had. Here's Naki Wells. Can he secure the points? Go yes, yeah. he does! <laughs> Naki Wells! What a touch. Bristol City have the winner! <laughs> Deep into injury time! Against his former club, his first goal of the season! Incredible. Andy, you can see he's cramping up, but he's, he sprints along anyway. What a pass, a little slip, I think. Breathtaking attacking football from Bristol City. Andy Vyman with the assist. What a first touch from Naki. So his second one is shooting at goal. Brilliant. And having come off the bench, Naki Wells does what he does best, wheels away in celebration. And those Bristol City fans have what they so richly deserve. <laughs> I think Toby was a bit excited for that one, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. <laughs> cracking game, cracking game, some good memories. I think, you know, one of the things you were talking about whilst we were watching the highlights is how, in a very short space of time, the team has changed. And, you know, what we have before us now, you know, the momentum, it just feels like it's building. And you're a very tight bunch of lads, aren't you? Yeah, and that's, you know, credit to the gaffer for sort of instilling that sort of mentality in all of us and uh, building that squad where you know we're, we're all good people i feel mm. and it's easy to get on when you all enjoy each other's presence yeah, yeah. so talk, let's t t talk to us about the summer then so presumably after today i mean there's there's going to be a bit of a break is there i mean how does it work with your rehab because i guess there has to be some form of continuation of that um i'll be in the hpc tomorrow so um along with the other lads so uh, hopefully no one you know touch with no one picks up an injury mm -hmm. today but it would just be me and Eamon um, but we they've been quite generous actually I was you know I was a bit worried about where where I'd stand and sort of you know how long I'd get on holiday mm. to get away and they've been generous give me a couple of weeks so I've you know I've grasped that opportunity I'm going to be getting away okay. it's really important um, but you know the rest of the boys they'll be they'll be off on a, you know the internationals I think Scotty's got the the World Cup mm -hmm. and there's a few qualifiers as well for for the other boys but apart from that it'll be see you in pre-season for those boys yeah um so for you any where you're going holiday plans um yeah i've got a couple i'm going to portugal oh, nice. and then i'm going to go to cos in, in one of the greek, greek islands, islands. So oh. i don't want to go i don't want to go too far really i mean yeah exactly. obviously with the knee i don't want it to balloon up over the flight an, an eight hour flight and just get off and find out that my, my knees ballooned up again. That'd be pretty horrible. Right? Yeah. You've got to be pretty careful with it, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, it's the, um, just some shots here from, from Loftus Road. So w when it comes down to it, what, what sort of game do Bristol City need to play today, Rob? It's, it's, yeah, as I've been saying, it's going to be hard, but you just got to act like this is sort of important game and mm. go at it like it's, it's any other game. You can't really afford to not do that. Otherwise, you know, it could, could be embarrassing especially if I mean I'm sure they'll be up for it I think hopefully we can get a, a good game and we can get Toby doing some of those reactions like he did last time <laughs> I don't think his voice had cope gosh <laughs> some there was some uh, some shouting there uh, Sykes is just warming up there Zach Viner of course was one of the big winners at the awards dinner on Thursday which we'll talk more about a little bit later on but it's it's been a cracking season for for, for some of the boys out there you must be a very proud teammate um yeah I'm Obviously, a bit disappointed that I'm not out there myself. Of course, but, um, I look forward to see where this this group of lads where we can go. Um, yeah. I'm already really excited for next season. I think, you know, the players that have the young players that have made their breakthrough this season, they've got that season under their belt now. So, you know, you'd like to think that they're only going to get better and better, and then hopefully in pre-season we'll blood in some some more young players. You know, get them on the the pre-season trip to wherever we're going nearly gave it away then didn't yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know they can 
um, as we've seen, you know, the gaffer does give these young players chances. So there's always hope, and if you if you do perform in pre-season, there's every chance that you'll be starting come the first game of the season. Good stuff. All right. Thanks for now, Rob. Stand by. Thanks very much if you've been watching on YouTube and Facebook. We have to turn you off now, but you can still buy your pass at bcfc.co.uk.